<laughs> without telling us. Yeah, that Cheers, is the most Roy. funny. Yeah, thanks for that, Roy. It's like, Roy, give us a countdown. You're on. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the next game is going to get underway. It is going to be CTF on Arcaden. And like I said, this is going to be a really, really amazing game. I, I expect it to be really close. But once again, the question is, how are Enigma's ARs going to play? If they play on form, Enigma play it extremely well. We saw it on the last CTF, and let's just hope we can see it again right now. Yeah, we are on board with Skitlight. Going into this, Arkadon captured the flag in this grand final. It's going to be very interesting to see. Obviously, Skitlight coming off a win at the moment. Yeah, Skitlight are going to have that confidence. They have just taken that s &D. I'm on board with Sambi right now. He's going to make his way at hold. Going to try and get that nade off a tree. He did just see someone. But a few kills being exchanged early on, nothing much yet, no two pieces or three pieces. But Sambi just looks like he's going to try and patrol a little bit. Doesn't need to do anything, and oh, Sambi gets very lucky indeed. Teammate saving his life. That would have been very embarrassing if he just walked straight past without realizing, but Dizzy does get that nade off. FMF kills Dizzy, and Zeb kills Mothja. Lots of kills being exchanged so far. Very intense already in this, and you know what? I am feeling the land hype. I am several hundred miles away, but I am bouncing <laughs> in my seat for this game. I can feel the excitement from here. Obviously, we are watching some incredible Call of Duty this weekend. I think, you know what? People were complaining about the size of this tournament. But, uh, you know what? The skill level is definitely quality over quantity. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the things we've seen this this LAN has been absolutely it's something to shout about. We've seen so many clutch plays, so many big kills and three pieces, four pieces, etc. It's been absolutely amazing. Still, though, we haven't actually seen a one versus four clutch in S&D, so hopefully this grand final can provide us with one of them that will definitely give us something to shout about. Yeah, it should be really, really interesting, but neither team managing to pull anything so far. One minute 30-something gone in this game, and it looks like Junaz is just holding off that spawn. Yeah, it just doesn't really look like either team wants to just go out there too aggressive. And finally now, Skitlight getting a few plays down. And this is where we're going to see Junos be very aggressive. Jumps the corner, takes down Zebi. And can he get the second? Yes, he can. That is a nice, nice play by Junos. And it looks like he's actually going to try and get this pull. And he could be away here. Yeah, dynamite play there from Junos. Obviously, he's not going to run it as they are going to spawn bottom burgers, but no, manages to get away. Loxy taking down one, Sammy taking down Zemi. This is going to be there. They're going to be so close to the plate, oh. and he is taking down, but Loxy going for the clutch. And this could be a complete counter cap here. Oh, does not manage to get it. Henke taking him down, and Mofja is right by the back of that flag. Yeah, lots of pressure on Mofja. He was able to actually stick Henke there. But, I mean, that was massive, massive play there by Joxy. He managed to get himself all the way back into Skitlight's flag and stop that flag cap. Very, very nice play coming from Enigma there. But Skitlight was so very close to actually capping that. That is going to give them a little bit more confidence now. They actually managed to get Enigma on that back foot as Sambi does just get naded. He is going to see someone else and gets dropped by Henke. And Henke manages to sponge that nade. He could pull this and be away if FMF isn't careful. FMF spraying there, but he has missed him. And he gets taken oh. down in a reply. This a going huge here. And Enigma have now put the pressure on and that flag is away. Sambi the only one out and he gets taken oh. down as well. All of Skitlight down and they're going to go for the relay. Yeah, they've gone for that relay. They've managed to cap one. FMF is going to be in hot pursuit, though. But I'll be amazed if he can get anywhere near that as Enigma just had them completely trapped. And literally, that is what this map can be like. In the blink of 20 seconds, two flags kind of gone. And, oh, FMF doing nice work. Just getting Joxy out of green. Just stopping him dictate the spawns. And now Skit, like, really needs to just recompose. He's going to see someone front bar. Does take him down. That is going to be three players down. And FMF now can try and pull this flag. Yeah, FMF can be very aware of that. He's getting stunned on, but hasn't been hit. Oh no, Zebi dropping him here. That accuracy from Zebi just pulling off an amazing shot to stop it. Monster putting off a two piece. Looks like they're going to try and run this flag again. Sambi covering, but no, they've slowed down a little bit. Yeah, it just seems that <laughs> that the way Enigma play when they just slow it down, they they force Skitlight to play at their own pace. And this is exactly what we're talking about. This is the Enigma we really like to see as FMF actually takes down Sambi, his own teammate and then takes down Dizzy, but Zeb is going to respond, and so is Jox with a two-piece, and again, pressure on Skidlight. Yeah, it's interesting to see, this was actually the, the other way around when we watched them play in the uh, winner's bracket. Uh, so it's interesting to see just how it's much he's changed in this grand final. Enigma actually doing worse in the S&Ds, but playing better at the capture of the flags. Yeah, it has just completely rotated around, but I'm on board with Sambi. He does take down Henke, who was just rushing through hole, and he is going to take down Joxy as well. Nice play by Sambi. That is going to be three down. Zeb is going to be left last alive, but Skitlight need to get near this flag, and what is Sambi doing? He's just taking down Junas, and I'm not sure if there was someone back bar, but that was very pointless. They managed to get three down. They really needed to be trying to pull that flag. Yeah, that may be a crucial mistake here at this game. You can't afford to make mistakes, especially in the grand final. It is all on the line. I believe the prize pool for this weekend is £1,080. That's split 50%, 30%, 20%. So there is definitely a good amount of money on 
Yeah, absolutely. And Skitlight have managed to finally pull that flag. 25 seconds. I'm surprised they aren't all just running back just to make sure Skitlight can get off the mark. As last time, yes, they do actually cap that nice play, but Enigma strike back with an immediate two kills. Sambi is going to kill Dizzy off one turns. Oh, that's massive play. Takes down Henke as well. Three down. They need to be trying to pull this flag, but there isn't going to be enough time. I don't think. No, there isn't. But that was nice, nice play there by Skitlight right at the end. Yeah, another 10 seconds there, and they would have definitely pulled that flag and probably got it home by the look of it. Yeah, absolutely. Sambi <laughs> going for that final kill cam, but Joxy steals it away from him with a pistol whip of his own. And that is very nice play there by Joxy. Oh, <laughs> get turned on with the pistol. Very, very nice indeed. Yeah, we're going to see how this second half goes. I think uh, Skitlight will probably step it up a little bit as it... You know what? I actually prefer pulling through that link. Bowman, are you still there? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just had the, I had the scoreboard up there. I completely agree that yeah, pulling through link is a lot easier. And we're obviously going to get on board with Enigma in this second side. They do have that one flag advantage. And it's, it's just so interesting to see, like you said, in that losers, uh, sorry, in that winner's bracket final, they just didn't seem to be as aggressive. They didn't seem to have confidence in their CTF game. But they have just completely changed that around in this grand final. Yeah, this actually done an FMF. You know what? He's playing really well for his team. 15 for 6, out slaying them at the moment. So obviously, that's going to give his team a great big boost. But Joxy is back. And it looks like he's going to try and stop any sort of pressure. Yeah, that's well played there by Joxy. He has just Semtex his own teammate, but he manages to avoid that. So smart play there coming from that Enigma play. Not sure who it was, but Joxy has just seen someone to his left. And he seems to be playing on an extremely high sensitivity. I'm not sure if that's just me, but it looks like he's playing extremely high. But considering his accuracy is so good, that really would be a surprise. It'd be interesting to find out what sensitivity he actually does play on. But all four Enigma players are up, and they just need to try and defend this one flag cap lead that they do have. Whether they go aggressive or defensive, they just need to hold on. Yeah, he's, like I said, he's actually playing quite a high sensitivity. I'd, I'd like to know what it is too. But kills being exchanged everywhere here. Back and forth, back and forth. they be trying to pick him up, but oh. does not get him off. He comes back and actually turns him there. Dizzy, oh, that is a bad start. He's done it oh, twice. He's done it twice. That oh. could be crucial here because that flag is now away. Yeah, that was poor, poor. Stunning, if I'm honest. But the flag has actually been dropped. Zebby doing a bit of clutch work. Takes down Junus back of flag. Henke takes down FMF. And Enigma really have just caught a lucky break there, if I'm honest. That was very, very lucky. Obviously, that play sending himself twice. Very poor play. But that luckily didn't actually cost them anything. And Zebi is able to get a little bit more map control. Takes down Moftia front bar. Just pre-aiming up top. Joxy takes down FMF. That is two skit -like plays down. And Enigma are going to now get some map control. Yeah, hopefully we're going to see Enigma actually push forward. As they do try and win this number half. We'll actually get a flag. But they haven't been that aggressive this half. Barely able to pull into bar. Haven't really been playing like they were in the first half. So Zebi up there at the moment. Looks like they are actually making a push. Yeah, Zebby just nearly got that nade inside. He has just seen two, though. And FMF, nice shot there, takes down Zeb. And Henke is going to take down Junos. Dizzy is in a nice little spot, though. He just needs to take his time. Doesn't actually need to engage anything just yet, but he is going to turn that corner, takes down FMF. Now he's going to have to push it to back bar. Jumps, pre-fires. There is a guy behind him. Can he turn? No, he can't. Joxy top models, takes down Junos. Nice play. Yeah, obviously, we are on board with Zebby. With that suppressed ACR, we keep seeing him pull out. Uh, on this map, it's not too bad. The sight lines aren't that long, apart from maybe the A domination sight line. But it looks like he has been stunned there, just trying to control this middle of the map. Yeah, it's a crucial part of this map. And that Moftia has just taken down Henke. And oh, the pistol whip on Zeb. He's not going to be happy about that at all. He now has to just rotate back to green. He just got shot from behind as well. And can he get the knife? No, he can't. And oh, Enigma getting a lot of players down. And Skitlight could be pulling this flag. Yeah, Skitlight, I'm going to pull this flag. There is someone at the back. Zeb, he's probably the only one who's going to be able to stop it. Can he stop this flag on his own? His team need to be around him. He's heavily, heavily damaged here. And he needs to stop that. But no, Dizzy does spawn in just in time. But Zeb does get dropped. Dizzy needs to just do a bit of clutch play. He needs to make sure that flag doesn't go anywhere. The flag has been picked up. He is heavily stunned though, but manages to get that kill. Nice play, but it looks like there is one more. No, that was his teammate. Flag has been returned. Tens, tens times for Enigma. One minute 35. If it stays like this, it will be 4-4 four, four in this best of six grand final. Yeah, so best like Enigma best. are now pushing out very, very hard. Just say, we're going to pick up that kill. No, skip like dropping Enigma three down again. Joxy's going to have to try and hold this off by himself. Yeah, it just seems Enigma are being so passive, but that's a nice shot off on Mofja. Zeb spawns in, takes down FMF, and Joxy is just going to fight for a little bit of map control now, just so his team do get better spawns. There is someone up top. He is going to take down Sambi. Nice, nice play by Joxy. Zebby also taking down a player there, bringing Skitlight to two down, and he sends someone else here. If he can drop this player, they could be going for another pull. Yeah, this is a crucial kill. Joxy needs to make it. He has just outthought his opponent, but Moftia drops and takes him down. 
and oh, lots of kills being exchanged. It's going to be two versus two momentarily as Zeb is going to take down Sambi at his own tree. One player left for Skitlight. It's going to be Junas. He's probably going to be somewhere back bar. But Enigma, they don't realistically need to actually push. They can just hold. But Dizzy has actually gone for the flag. Does get stunned. Has some support in the form of Zeb. And he needs to actually track back and make sure they cap this. Yeah, Zebby actually coming out there with his team. Trying to take, can he get this oh. kill? He can. Loxie also taking one down. If this flag goes home, he's going to be all over. There will be no hope for them coming back. Yeah, you can see all the Enigma players running back just to secure this cap. And they have done. That is very, very nice play by Enigma. And that is going to be a, a win for Enigma. It's going to be 4-4. Yeah, that is going to be 4-4 four, four in maps there. Obviously, you know what, Enigma taking this capture flag, like I said, they didn't do great in the capture flags against them last time. Yeah, they really didn't play that strong last time we saw these two in uh, capture flag, which was in the uh, winner's bracket final. But grand final, they've really turned it around. And if they can hold their S&D game, you can honestly see Enigma going on to actually win this tournament. Right, we're going to run a quick advert while we take a quick break, and we will see you for the next map. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to EGL6 here in Sweden. We are in the grand final with Skitlight Finland versus Enigma. I am Bryce and I am here with Ben. Say hello, Ben. Hello, stream. As promised, this is an amazing game. We said these two were going to be absolutely inseparable. And sure enough, they are completely inseparable. Once again, we are going to be on S&D on C-Town, I believe. And it's currently 4-4 in maps. Yeah, they look like they're going to take this all the way in this best of 11. I wouldn't be surprised if we do have to go all the way to that 11th game here. They just keep putting maps off maps off each other. And I said on this search and destroy, we're probably going to see Enigma play this very, very, very slow. Yeah, there is already one play down. I believe it's Joxy. So they're already at a bit of a disadvantage. It's three versus four. But the way Enigma play s and it, it just seems like Skit like just keep breaking through. Which is really strange because for the majority of the tournament, Enigma have been one of the strongest teams in S&D. But as it stands, it is two versus three. You know, I actually think Enigma won this last time, if I remember correctly. They have played this map before this tournament. So, obviously, they will be looking to capitalize on that. Zebi, using that ACR to just try and scope out before they go for any sort of bomb plant. Obviously, they do have the distance. Well, he does pick oh. up a kill there, though. So that bringing it back to 2-2. Two, two. Are they going to continue in this area or should they back the whole way around? No, oh. Sabi takes down Dis. Yeah, Sammy does just take down Dizzy, and Zebby's just going to need to have to rotate around. Looks like he's going to try and make his way towards the skit like spawn, anticipating one play to probably be around B. He knows he's got someone right behind him, and he is going to find that player in the spawn. Just a bit of a choke there, didn't necessarily need to fire, and he's going to have to leave that. Is getting peppered with nades, and he's just going to try and play bushwocky for a minute, but that is going to pay off an FMS. Says, Thank you for an easy kill. Did you say he's going to play bush hooky? Wookie. Wookie. Bush wookie. Yeah, you know bush wookie. Yeah, Bush, everyone sure knows do. Bushwookie. I'm not sure I do. Well, I'll you let you off, though. Yeah, I'm having I'm not, that. I, I don't really want to Google it. That could be anything. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right, we're actually going to jump on board with the other team here. No, it's actually, we're going to yeah, do two, yeah. so, two rounds of side, and then we are still on board with Enigma. I'm on board with Zebby as he uses these dirty little spots that we keep seeing players pull out. <laughs> I love how you describe that as dirty. <laughs> it, is a, it is a very, very nice spot, you've got to admit. I mean, some of the spots that we've seen th this tournament, I mean, you'd think, you know, Modern Warfare 3, nearly at the end of its lifeline. And, thank God. And, yeah, thank God. But yet, we're still seeing spots that people don't actually know about. I mean, I've seen a few that I didn't know. I'm definitely going to use when I'm playing. But as it stands, it's still four versus four, one minute 57 still to play. Yeah, very, very interesting spots, Ben, and you probably should learn. You need all the help you can get, but <laughs> we are still on board with this Enigma side, and like I said, they do tend to spread out in this line here and just try and hold the map with pre-aiming, and we're actually going to jump on board with someone else just to see who is moving around. Let's jump on board with Henke, as he is probably the furthest forward of this Enigma lineup, and he is moving about, floating about with that MP7. Yeah, he should pick up a kill there. Oh, that was insane. FMF went for the lunge, and Henke just ducked. That was something out of the Matrix. That was crazy. I have no idea how he's done that. But Enigma, 4 versus 2, 1 minute 22. That was crazy. Yeah, definitely. Unbelievable reflex there. Drop shotting that knife went over the top of him. And FMF is not going to be happy about that. Definitely not going to be a happy bunny at all. But Henke has complete control over A. And this is where Enigma looks strong now. It's 4 versus 2. And they just don't look like anyone can get through. Which is something... Oh, I say that with Moff to just take down Henke on that A-bomb. Enigma may just have to reshuffle in order to just capitalize, make sure no one is at A. Zeb has just got a few shots. Someone is in that bottom A building. He's going to try and get that stun off and doesn't actually connect just yet. 49 seconds. They can't afford to just try and wait the clock out, though. 
Yeah, it looks like they are going to slow down a little bit. Obviously, Skit like two versus three are going to have to try and push forward now. And you know what? Enigma are waiting for them. They have, like you said, you see on the map so often, they're in that line. Yeah, they're still in that line. They just don't look like any time they're going to break out of it. I mean, 30 seconds left. I think the most probable bomb is going to be A. I mean, if you look at Dizzy, he's got that B bomb completely on lock. It doesn't look like he's going to die. Joxy does take down Sambi. Mofta responds by taking down Zeb though, and it looks like he's somewhere near that A bomb. Dizzy's going to try and get that nade off. Just going to rotate around, make sure he hasn't gone into his own spawn. And it, time is running out. He's got 12 seconds to try and do something. Two Enigma players still up. It looks like Enigma are going to take this round. Yeah, obviously Enigma don't have to do anything here other than look at the bombs and keep out of the way. So actually going to take this round. Yeah, you just see the Enigma players do the smart thing, just split up completely. So obviously if one did die, the other one was in no danger whatsoever. It just I'd like to know where Mofta actually went, and whether he actually had the bomb or he was actually going for those kills. But nevertheless, we are going to change team now, and it is currently 1-1 one, one in this S&D. Right, here we go. Currently on board with Skit, like I am on board with Sambi as he goes round to this right hand side. Uh, it looks like he's trying to get see if he gets any hit markers. He isn't now pre aiming through that archway. Maybe trying to see if anyone is rushing on foot. Henke taking down FMF. Yeah, it's going to be three on four already. And Skit, like, do you just sort of need to reshuffle the line that they are in? I mean, I'm just going to cycle through. Junas has been very aggressive with you. He's actually made his way all the way to mid market. So two minutes left to play. It's three versus four. And I'm actually going to get on board with Mofja. He's actually using his SMG as Zeb takes down Junas. So Skitlight could be in a bit of trouble here. They don't want to let Enigma get away with them. And it is actually going to be a one versus four. Can we finally see the first one versus four of this tournament? If we see a one versus four right now, I will give £100 of charity. <laughs> Come on, Mofja. You can do it. Which charity? That's the question. Uh, I will let the stream decide as long as it's a sensible charity. He picks up one, though. Up he one. does pick up one. Going for the SMG, looking through the middle, but no, that bomb has gone down. Doesn't look like he's going to do it. Oh. oh, you know what? I want to see a clutch this weekend. I want to see a big clutch. Come on, somebody do it. Oh, my God, look at that dodge running everywhere. How has he done that? I have no idea how he's managed to dodge that, but he is not going to have time to defuse this and, and get this clutch, I don't think, unless all three Enigma players sit in a line. But time is running out. 25 seconds. He has a guy somewhere to his right. Can he pick up that kill? He just seems to be windmilling a little bit and doesn't connect. Oh. Joxy says, thank you very much. We will take a 2-1 lead. Yes. Interesting there. Like you said, he tried very, very difficult. Pulling it off. You can clearly see the pressure with the way he was playing. Very erratic. Obviously, the adrenaline there ramping right up in his system. It's going to be interesting to see how he plays the rest of this. Yeah. Very, very true indeed. And we are going to stay on board with Skitlight on their attacking round. And I'm going to get on board with the bomb carrier who is going to be June as it looks like. And he's making a little push towards this left-hand side. Just going to see if anyone is going to go top A through that window. Hasn't seen anyone just yet. Hasn't seen anyone go up the stairs either. Just jumping to see if he can get any line of sight on that mid. Hasn't seen anyone just yet and still four versus four. Yeah, he did make a little bit of a cracking sound with his legs, which is what you got to be careful when you go from a height. Obviously, it does give away your position here. All players using very, very good headsets just to hear for the most benefit you can get. Uh, Juno's actually deciding to change tactics because he's gone the complete other way around the map. It looks like his team is securing that side for him. Yeah, his teammates obviously have just called it B. It looks like the safer option. And Junas has just rotated all the way around. He's going to try and get that stun off, see if he gets any hit markers at B. And he does actually connect with a hit marker. Not sure if that was his own teammate. No, it wasn't. There is a player there. He's going to try and get another stun and Semtex off, but didn't connect. And there's a play to his left. He takes down Henke. Nice play by Junas. Four versus three. And I'm pretty sure there's probably going to be one more player at B. There is. And Dizzy drops Junas. Nice, nice play there by Dizzy. Yes, it was very nice play there. Obviously, Enigma now have the advantage. Uh, only Sambi and Mofja left against the three players from Enigma. And Sammy looks like he's seen someone up that top building. He looks like he's trying to pick off a just pick off a long range kill here. Uh, we're actually going to jump on board with the other player who he's moving around. We're on board with Mofja right now as he goes through here. To actually, using the ladder to have a quick look up the top. Uh, it looks like he's actually ducking behind those things. He's clearly thinking about what he's doing. Yeah, very intelligent play coming from Mofja. Just needs to see if he can get a close range kill. Obviously, he's using this PP. He doesn't want to be trying to engage something from distance. But you see, he's checking all the spots he knows about. It's a very intelligent play, but Skitlight needs to try and get over to that bomb. 51 seconds left. It is two versus three, and we know Enigma are not planning on moving anytime soon from the way we've seen them play S&D. Yeah, Enigma's so patient. Zeb is there. Can he get the two kills? And he does bang from through the wall. Wow. Didn't give him a chance to get away there. Nice, nice play by Zeb. Saw one and said, thank you very much. Two piece. I'll take it. Why not? Nice wall bang there. Mofja was weak already, but that is nothing to take away from Zeb. Really, really well played.
yeah, just very briefly, if you are watching the stream, please do us a favour and tweet it out. We obviously want to get the most people in here to watch this amazing Call of Duty, and I believe we're staying on board with the same team. No, we're not. I'm lying. We are jumping on board with Enigma. <laughs> I keep forgetting what the map score is. Obviously, 3-1 to Enigma at the moment. If they can take this, they can take the advantage against Skitlight. Yeah, finally, we have seen Enigma start playing their S&D game. And as it stands, it is 4-4 in maps in this best of 11. Both teams only need two more maps. And if Enigma can take this, they are going to have the world of confidence going into the last CTF. And it would be kind of unfortunate for Skitlight. Obviously, these two teams have played twice already in this tournament. Skitlight managed to come off the better team twice. And I'm sure they'll be absolutely gutted if Enigma come out and actually win this. Yeah, that would be so devastating to beat one team twice in two best of fives and then lose it in the grand final, especially when they had the advantage, would be, well, you know what, I wouldn't even want to put myself in that place. <laughs> You'd be very, very unhappy indeed. But as it stands, Enigma do have that one-man advantage. It is a four versus three scenario. And I'm on board with Zeb right now. He's making his way towards this market, just trying to check as many corners. He has that bomb carrier to his left. But 1 minute 25, not making a move yet. He's just checking that bottom market corner just to see if anyone is there. Just going to try and get a line of sight on crates. That would be an amazing shot if he manages to pull that off. I don't think there's going to be anyone there, though. But 1 minute 15 still to play, and it's still 4 versus 3. It does not look like this Enigma team with that worry. They seem to be playing quite slow, although the bloke with the bomb is now pushing forward. Dis actually moving forward. Let's have a look. Zeb is watching that way. I believe his other teammate is also watching. Let's see what they can do here. But no, he's not going for the bomb plant. We're actually going to jump on board with him. Dis now going to go for the bomb plant, see what happens. Let's jump on board with someone watching him. Joxie is probably the nearest, so we're on board with Joxie as he goes to put that bomb down. Yeah, they've set up very, very well indeed. Obviously, all four players still alive. Skitlight with a lot of work to do. 39 seconds. I'm on board with this and he's engaging and he does manage to pull that off there actually taking him down I'm not sure if you caught that quite quickly enough on stream as we were flicking between players and go for the second kill Ooh. no doesn't get that one either it is a one versus three there it is FMF up against three Enigma players and he's probably just gone for a straight diffuse no he hasn't Henke says thank you very much Enigma take a one map lead 5-4 to Enigma Yes, it is 5-4-2 Enigma taking the advantage in this grand final. Uh, I wonder if we're going to see Skitlight really feel the pressure now. Maybe start to break down a little bit. They know they've lost the advantage. Mm, very, very true. Although, to be fair, Enigma have been one map away from victory twice already. And Skitlight have come back to beat them. So it'll be interesting to see if history will repeat itself. But we will be right back with the next map after this quick commercial break.